Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday. It is hump day. It's time to get at it, guys. It's get to, you know, it's that time of week. It's that midweek when you do that final push to get to the weekend. Feeling a little bit better. Still a little congested. I've had this pain in the back of my neck for the last, like, two days. It's calling, causing me to have a headache. But uh, I don't know if I just slept wrong or from laying in bed for so many days and all that other stuff. Because I don't do well laying in bed for all that time. So, I don't know. I need somebody to massage it out. It's uh, pretty rough. But it is what it is. Two beans in a bucket. Beep. But, uh. How are y'all doing this morning? Everybody motivated, everybody ready to tackle this day and be productive. As you can see, my voice is getting better. I still got a lot of stuff coming up out of my chest and stuff. Um, I did make it through the day yesterday with work. Um, not gonna lie, I was a little weak by the time it was over with, but I had a lot to do because I was celebrating Margarita's birthday yesterday. Her birthday is actually today. So happy birthday, boo. Um, I hope she has a great day. Everybody in the comments, just blow it up with happy birthday, Margarita. But uh, I threw it down last night, guys. So I asked y'all for a lot of suggestions for her birthday and stuff like that because she wasn't giving me nothing. She was just like, oh, I just want to see you. Well, you know, that's a setup. <laughs> if, if I would have just seen her and no gift, I don't think that would have worked out too well. It probably would have. I, I think she genuinely just wanted to see me. But uh, she wasn't giving me no hints, no nothing. So I worked it out. So what I did is I grilled her some ribeyes, um, baked potatoes, and I also grilled and sauteed some zucchini and squash with some avocado oil and a couple of seasonings and stuff on the grill. Hooked up a real nice romantic dinner. Um, set up the table with a nice tablecloth and all of that. And uh, had her gifts and stuff all in a bag when she got there on the table. Had some happy birthday signs hung up. And even got some happy birthday tiaras when I picked her up at the end of the drive because her car can't make it up to come on mountain. I even had one of the happy birthday things on my head. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And I had one for her to wear too. And then uh, after we got done with dinner, she didn't know it, but her favorite cake is chocolate. So I also had her a little miniature chocolate cake with the number of uh, age that she is with candles, sung her happy birthday. Now, I don't know if that was torture or a good thing because I can't sing. A lot of people think I sing my intro songs and stuff on my uh, main channel come on homesteading but it's not me trust me i can't sing so sung her happy birthday and then also um i got her i went with thoughtful gifts and also get the gifts of the census is what i came up with i got her a nice little throw cover that's all nice and soft because she's always cold at the cabin because i run the air conditioner very very cold at night um that way it holds its temperature during the day a little better so she's always cold so i bought her a little nice cozy co uh, cover and then i got her some nice sandals for the house so whenever she's going outside and stuff like that around the cabin and i don't have like the floors finished and stuff like that too so they're not the best floors that she can wear sandals where she ain't got worried about getting her feet dirty I also got her, uh, well, I got her a candle, a watermelon candle that smelled great. That was a good smelling candle. And then I also got her one of those, uh, little things that melt the wax for the fragrance and all that other stuff. I got her that and I got her like a real rustic kind of looking one because she likes that rustic type furniture and stuff. That's kind of what her house is decorated in. So I got one that would match that. And then uh, also a little stuff like a toothbrush for my house and just little odds and ends stuff. And then there was one more thing, I can't remember what it was. 
there was something else. But I also got her, which she don't know about yet. I got her a big old bouquet of roses and flowers going to her job today. Now, I'm not going to post this video until she actually calls me and tells me that she got that. That way I don't ruin the surprise, but I'm telling you guys. But yeah, um, I called a florist in the area where she works yesterday and I designed a bouquet with some uh, nice red roses and some other really nice uh, like spring summertime flowers and stuff. And that should be sent to her at like 10 o'clock this morning. So she don't even know that's coming. She thinks that I'm already, you know, done with all the birthday stuff. And uh, tonight, she's actually going to be spending her birthday with some friends. They're doing a little pool party and with her kids and stuff. And uh, I'm not going to get to see her tonight. So that's why I celebrated it with her last night. But I think that wasn't too bad. In the comments, tell me what you think. How did I do? I think I did pretty good. Um, you know, I've also been sick for the last week, so to kind of throw all of that together very quickly was uh, challenging, but you know, I worked it out, I worked it out, uh, let's see here, it is, it is 90 degrees at 6.15 this morning, it was so hot yesterday guys, so hot. We had heat indexes of 115 degrees at 6 o'clock last night. It was still 105 degrees temperature-wise. I think it got up to like 109 yesterday or something like that. Like, what's going on, Arkansas? I mean, that's some Florida desert weather stuff right there. Last summer, it was nowhere near this hot uh, here in Arkansas because I came up for the 4th of July last summer. And it was gorgeous but man it is scorching this year it is so hot and then last night you know the whole birthday thing I was gonna do like a candlelight dinner outside and all of that and then we was gonna go look at the stars and, and, and that whole deal it was so hot last night I scratched all of that I set everything up in the house and stuff like that where there's air conditioner because it was so nasty nasty hot and then also would I cook outside so after cooking and stuff, I was sweating. It was, yeah. I don't know what's going on with the weather, but it has been kicking like Van Dam here lately. And I gotta get back out in it here soon. I gotta start making some progress there at the cabin. A lot of you guys have uh, been sending me all kinds of links and stuff to different solar uh, channels and different solar people, which is awesome because I am in the middle of active researching solars and trying to figure out the best direction to go with that so as soon as I get some time that's the challenge right finding the time um, I'll research some more of those like I said I know I said the other day Tesla's the front runner right now and they are but there's a million different types of systems out there and I'm not set on none of them yet so I'm trying to do my due diligence it's a lot of money it's a big investment and I want to make something that will last for a long time and also you know customer support and uh, customer service all that stuff is very important with that this is a system that I'm going to rely on 100% for power to run the whole homestead so I need good customer service, customer support, all of that other stuff just in case there's issues, stuff like that. And I want something that's going to last because if you got to replace this system every five years or something like that, I mean, it's going to be really costly and honestly it would be better if I just paid the $25,000 and got electric at the cabin. So, and I don't want to pay $25,000 to bring electric to the cabin. So. I want to just take my time, do my due diligence. I know uh, a lot of y'all think it's a waste of money to run off generators and stuff right now. And it is. I, I mean, it, it's draining a lot of money. But it's the smart thing for me to do right now than trying to rush a big investment like this and not getting what I need the first time. Um, I've seen so many horror stories about solar out there where people get this, get that. And then literally two years later, 
redo their whole system um, because it wasn't what they needed. So I'm going to try to do the research and do what I need to do to start with to try to avoid that. There still ain't no 100% chance that I'm going to you know, nail it on the first time, but I'm going to give it everything I got because it's a lot of money. It's a whole lot of money. So that, and, and I'm new to solar. Like I said, I've done little solar stuff, you know, like the Harbor Freight little solar panels and one battery and stuff like that when I had my homestead in Florida um, with the fifth wheel. The fifth wheel had the, you know, 12 volt system and plus you could run a generator and all of that. And I had a little solar system that I used to regenerate power for the batteries for the fifth wheel to run the lights and stuff like that at night. So I didn't have to run a generator when the weather was nice. But nothing like this big full blown, you know, full house solar setup that there is. I'm a pretty smart dude. I'm pretty technical. I mean, I do work IT for a living, so it's not nothing that I don't think I can't figure out. But it's a huge learning curve, and there's so much different stuff out there. It's almost too much stuff out there because there's so much stuff out there that you can kind of get overwhelmed and get, you know, cluttered with so much information, you know. So, and I need to find out what fits because I need enough that's going to run the cabin, but also I'm going to have a shop as well that I need to run, and I don't want to be having to stop projects and, and having to really watch, you know, what I turn on and off real, real hardcore just to be able to survive. I've also been researching a 12 volt air conditioner and freezers because right now I'm running off one of those uh, solar coolers right now and uh, it's challenging. Um, it works great. Uh, don't get me wrong. It didn't even get down to the point where it'll freeze. But the problem is, is, is if it gets down to the point it's freeze, then all the stuff that don't need to be froze gets frozen and messed up. And you have to unstack everything every, every time you need to get something from the bottom. It's, it's just an inconvenience. Um, but it does work. Now, I, I am a single dude, so I don't need a lot of food on hand. You know, the fresh food like that uh, to be able to survive. So it works for now. But I would like to start getting creature comforts um, in there. I'll be starting the bathroom here real soon with the cabin. So, you know, getting indoor plumbing, a kitchen sink, a bathroom sink, shower, toilet, all that other stuff to make my day-to-day -day life a little easier. Um, that'll be happening. And with that, I'm looking at uh, propane or natural gas uh, uh, stoves. And I was also looking at propane and 110 like refrigerator freezers like I had in my fifth wheel in uh, Florida. But when I was starting to look at those, I found the 12 volt uh, refrigerator freezers or whatever. And tell me what y'all think about those if, if y'all have researched them any. From what I'm seeing, I'm thinking that's going to be the best bang for the buck. And also, you know, when I do hook up the solar or whatever, it will use less power than all the other stuff. And it gets colder and it holds its temperature and it'll get negative degrees and all that in the freezer. Whenever those other types, the uh, propane, uh, I, forget, it, I forget what they call it or whatever, where it takes the heat out and all that from the RVs, they don't really get that cold. I mean, I had a really, really nice setup in Florida with my fifth wheel there. And uh, the freezer never did like would get ice cream like hard cold, you know, it would like real soft, you know, it just never really got that cold. And your temperature outside dictates a lot of that in those type of uh, refrigerators as well. And then you also still have the extra expense of like propane, uh, you know, or natural gas or whatever you're, you're running there. So. And I've already got a natural gas dryer that I got from Country Road Cure. The big deal with that is I wouldn't mind getting a big tank on the homestead, just having them come and fill it up. That'd be definitely a lot easier. I do have the 200 pound propane tanks right now um, that runs the heater. Um, it's just a matter of if, if they can get up to the property to do that. that that's, that's the big one there. Um, so I need to get the road better. And uh, that's also, in the forefront 
of my mind too. It is dry season right now. I need to put that culvert in that my neighbor gave me and uh, get the box blade on there and start leveling things out and then start milling some wood to make that bridge. So, so many projects coming up and basically July's been a wash. Uh, we had 4th of July and then I took the one weekend off that I started getting sick and then the last weekend I didn't work at all because I was definitely sick. And then this weekend is my birthday. Um, so Friday, I got my birthday going out with uh, different people for my birthday. And then Saturday, I got a wedding to go to with uh, Margarita's friends. So basically, this weekend is going to be a wash too. So that's basically a whole month that I didn't really get much done at the cabin. Which is hard on the mentals, let me tell you what. Because I'm the type of person that I'm a production person. I like to produce. So it's a little difficult a little difficult so and you know I only got a certain amount of months before you know that white stuff starts falling out the sky and it gets a little cold which I'm all right with honestly right now I mean I could survive comfortably in the winter um, I fought winter last winter during the winter um, the first night I stayed in the cabin when I bought it was 18 degrees no heater no insulation no nothing you want to talk about a long night well that automatically kicked in the okay we need to get some heat in this cabin and get that situated so i fixed that last year so the system that i got right now with the heater with the uh mr buddy heater or whatever it is it works great it'll heat you out of that cabin and will get me through the winter again if i need to but even that system is only a temporary system i do plan on doing something different whenever i renovate the cabin and that heater will actually go out of my shop whenever i build my shop so a lot to think about, a lot to think about. But make sure everybody in the comments blow it up, tell Margarita happy birthday, and let her know that you're thinking about her, and I hope that she has a wonderful one with her kids and family tonight. Um, she told me that she really, really, really enjoyed her birthday last night with me, and that I nailed it and all that. So that meant a lot to me. I wanted, uh, even though I've been sick and stuff like that, I really wanted it to, it's the first birthday, you know what I mean, that, that we celebrated together. So I wanted to make it special for her. And that's why I went with uh, more thoughtful type stuff, you know. So I think I did good. I think I nailed it. I appreciate all you guys' uh, suggestions. But we are getting close to work. And it is almost time for me to clock in. So I need to tighten my booty up. Uh, until we see each other again, guys, hey, come on, keep it real, come on.